Mohammed Salah finally signs a contract extension, three-year extension. I think it's like a 350k base salary with some add-ons and bonuses in there as well. So, becoming Liverpool's highest-paid player at this point ever. Yeah, uh, getting what he wants, um, and Liverpool fans must be rejoicing at this point, right? Like, this is this is basically a huge boost going into next season for Liverpool because now they know that they have their talisman. With look them at their before. attack. Look at their attack. Just <laughs> exactly. look at that attack. I think that is the most sinister attack in the Premier League right now. Although Nunes hasn't played a game, but you know for a fact that he's a monster. Look at him. Yeah, and uh, I think it's 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 really interesting the way that Liverpool have gone about their business. I feel it was very tactical in in how it took the sale of Sadio Mane for. Uh, Mohamed Salah to kind of find that middle ground to the point where the club kind of showed him that they weren't afraid to sell a big name if it came to that. But right. at the same time, they were like, "But we are still willing to keep you on board and give you that extension," which is again, it's really, really savvy business when you're thinking about about the management at Liverpool. So they're they're making all the right moves. Again, probably spending more money than they have traditionally over the last few years since Klopp has been at the helm, but. I mean, they're at a point where they kind of need to, right? Because they're they're facing against an attack of uh, Haaland, uh, Foden, not Sterling. Who else? Like Bernardo, Alvarez, so possibly Mahrez, not him. Mahrez, Mahrez, Alvarez. Alvarez. So they're, they're they're trying to keep pace at this point with with that team. So definitely a big boost for Liverpool going into next season. But the main thing that we are talking about is why we think Leeds United are going to be way way better. Going into next season, so yeah, why don't you start off with like just just the transfer that they've gone through? Lots of business like, so far. They've got six transfers in already, like Brendan Aronson and Christensen from Salzburg, Mark Rocca from Bayern, Darko Gabi from City, and the two very probably the most upcoming stars that I don't think Leeds would have attracted earlier. In Tyler Adams and Luis Sinistera, Adams I can understand with the Jesse Marsh, the mm-hmm. US connection, but getting Luis Sinistera was probably a move I didn't expect Leeds to make because he was linked with all the other big clubs as well. Yeah, and uh, I, I think the only, I think for me the only thing that they are missing is I feel they need to get either a replacement or like a proper backup for for Patrick Bamford. I know you were saying before we. Started recording that Sinistera can probably play as that attacking player, but he just—I mean, he's he's more known for his wing play as opposed to playing through the middle. And Bamford hasn't been particularly reliable the last couple of seasons, just because of injuries. Not that he's a bad player, but he definitely—they definitely need to try and get maybe a, a backup for him. But I mean, good business so far. I think all in all, they've spent less than 120 on their transfers. And they've already gotten in 50 for Calvin Phillips. Probably going to get another 60, 65 in for Rafinha. Uh, so they still have some some cash. Negative, They're basically breaking yeah. even right now. So they still have exactly. some cash to spend, which I presume they will try to replace Rafinha in in some shape or form. Um, but yeah, I mean, the main focus is very obvious. They've signed four midfielders so far, uh, both attacking and defensive midfielders, and players that Jesse Marsh either has had the experience of working with. Uh, or just knows a whole lot about by you know being in uh, in the Bundesliga uh, the last season or so, um, and really good players as well. And Tyler Adams maybe not been maybe not hit the the heights that he was expected to at this point, but still young, still a lot of room for development. Same thing with Mark Rocca that that move to uh, Bayern, Bayern isn't didn't, didn't quite work out, out for him. Making smart moves. It seems the theme of uh, this season is a lot of managers are going back and trying to sign their old players, but this one really seems to make sense. Um, so yeah, what's your takeaway? Like, where do you see Leeds kind of finishing come come the end of this season now? I think they ought to finish in the top eight. I guess eight nine could be a long shot, but you never know. You never know. With uh, I think Leeds were. Leeds have realized that injuries can play a huge part in what happens, and surviving through the skin of their teeth last season, they've realized that they better have more players than not have anyone to play. 
Exactly, and Marsh again not quite as aggressive as uh, Bielsa, but still plays a very high intensity uh, brand of football. So getting in those uh, that depth is really important for that team. Uh, top eight is, I mean, that is ambitious. Uh, I think for them, anything, anything barring like anything above fifteen is probably going to be a win for this season, and they'll probably try to build from there. Just given where they were last season, I mean, usually it's the first two or three seasons for newly promoted teams that are really like the danger bits. Most teams that even survive the first season end up eventually getting dragged into those relegation zones. Come their second and third seasons, so I think that that's probably going to be the main priority for them, just just to be nice and safe going into the season. Um, and I think with the moves that they've made so far, and with Jesse Marsh, the kind of faith that they have shown in him, it's pretty much nailed on, right? Very much. I mean, it's Leeds, Aston Villa, West Ham. I think these are the sides that are going to be pushing for. Maybe pushing for Europa League spot. I mean, this league is just getting looks tougher, like right? it because you have Crystal yeah. Palace in there as well. Of course, you have Wolves yeah, even that Palace possibly will be a little bit better in their second season under Bruno Lage. So, uh, and who knows? You know, maybe we are all wrong about Lampard. Maybe Everton do actually perform uh, to the level that the team should ideally be performing at. So, uh, lots of lots of names in there. So the next season is definitely. Ramping up to be a really, really interesting one.